Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me, yeah. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me. Ooh, 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 ooh. And I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Dragon fly out in the sun, you know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies all having fun, you know what I mean. Sleep in peace when day is done, that's what I mean. And this old world is a new world and a bold world for me. Shine, you know how I feel. Send out the pine, you know how I feel. Oh, freedom is mine, and I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. How are we doing tonight? Yeah. Welcome to the 16th Annual Communication Awards Show here at Atlantic Cape Community College. This show is organized and run by the Communication Awards Club and of course advised by Professor Keith Forrest and Jenna DeLuca. I hope everyone is excited to get up on stage tonight and, be, uh, and receive their awards. You all most definitely deserve it. In fact, these little Oscar-like trophies represent everything we do in the communication program here. Fellow comm majors, what are the three rules? Work hard, support each other, get involved. Right. So you don't just get a best film history paper or a best creative writing award if you don't work hard. And you don't get a mentoring award without getting involved, without uh, supporting each other. And you don't get a rewrites or ACR or radio club award without getting involved. If you're taking forest journalism class, then you know they're already hard enough. It's like boot camp. But if you get best feature story or journalism achievement, then that's an amazing feat. If you're in public speaking, then just getting up in front of people is hard enough. But if you win a best persuasive or best informative speech, that's also an amazing feat. There are, those are just a few of the 40 plus categories that the communication program has to offer. We will be handing out over 100 awards, including journalism, pop music history, mass media, public relations, creative writing, and many more. We are going to have an array of entertainment, including a top 10 songs of all time, and of course presentations from our Communication Major of the Year nominees, including Liv Matthews, Kat Jakes, Gavin Dolak, and all the way from England, Ruby Taylor. Above all the glitz and glamour of red carpets and Oscar trophies, I hope you all have a fun time tonight. Celebrate, 
take photos, and catch up with those who are still proudly waving their communication awards from previous shows. But you don't have to be a comm major to get any of these awards. If you win them by working hard, supporting each other, and getting involved, then that's just as good. Award givers include Keith Forrest himself, Jenna DeLuca, who couldn't make it tonight, but will be, will be with uh, Jenny Field Thomas, Emily Paul, and Celine Fleenor. So remember, this night is about us, but it's also about family, friends, and the mentors who helped us along the way. Thank you. And now I would like to call Dr. Denise Coulter to the podium. <coughs> Thank you, Chloe. So I have a question for you guys, those of you who are in Professor Forrest's class. Does he still get up on the desk at the beginning of the yeah. semester? Yeah. Make sure you get that new perspective, that different perspective. I love that. So um, I'm the Dean of Liberal Studies here at Atlanta Cape. I also oversee the Academy of Culinary Arts, but the communication program uh, falls under my purview. And I can't tell you how proud I am of Professor Forrest and, and Professor um, Jenny Thomas now. Um, they really have tremendous commitment and all the adjunct faculty in that, that program. But everything that they do with the students and everything that the students do and everything that the alumni do lead us up to this wonderful, exciting night. So I'm going to keep my remarks very short. Um, unfortunately, our president, Dr. Gaba, was unable to make it tonight. She loves you guys. She really enjoys this program and she wanted to send her good wishes to you. Uh, also, our VP of Academic Affairs is a big supporter, and she wishes she could be here tonight. This is such an important event because it takes a moment to celebrate. And as anybody knows, no matter where you're at in terms of your progress as a student, you got to take a moment, you got to pause, you got to reflect, and you got to celebrate. And then you need to go forward. So um, there are going to be over 100 awards being presented tonight in more than 40 categories with a great number of deserving nom nominees in the running. And this is really a highlight of the year. Um, to all of tonight's student nominees, congratulations. Your nomination shows that you have a talent and passion for your work. These qualities are essential to your success in college and in life. If you keep up the hard work, what you can achieve is truly limitless. Your efforts make Atlanta Cape an institution of excellence, and we are honored to celebrate your achievement. And again, I just want to acknowledge everybody who was engaged in preparing for tonight, both Professor Forrest, Professor Jenny Thomas, I want to thank Jenna DeLuca, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight, uh, every faculty member, every member of the alumni, all of the students, and all of you who are here tonight, family, friends, uh, future students, enjoy. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 16th Annual Communication Awards. I believe it is, I'm speaking for myself, as well, as well as my lovely co-hosts, that it is such an honor to be back here with our communication family to be hosting tonight's event. So for those of, so for those of us who don't know who we are, allow us to introduce ourselves. I am Jalen Hudgens. I was communication major of the year, serving the 2019 to 2020 term. I was the first African American communication major of the year. And I was the first Cape May County resident to become communication major of the year. I am a recent graduate at Kane University, and now I am back here at Atlantic Cape, where it all started for me as a college recruiter. Folks, I wrote it down because it's very long, so buckle up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Robin, formerly Rachel Doherty, and I was the 2019 to 2020 Communication Major of the Year runner-up, the 2020 to 2021 Communication Major of the Year, and Communication Awards Club President in that same year. attending Rowan University as a writing arts major and I, thank you. and 
I graduate summa cum laude in 10 days. And I wouldn't have done so if it weren't for the amazing communication program at Atlanta Cave and Professor Keith Forrest. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Eileen Alvarez Santiago and I was the communication major of the year from 2021 to 2022. I was nominated a week before the 2021 Communication Awards and I'm the first to ever get international votes and I am also the second person to win from Cape May County. Woo! University studying film and television and I will be graduating next year. Hi, my name is Julia Train. I was the 2021-2022 president of the Communication Awards Club and I was the major, the runner-up of the same year. And um, I'm also now the alumni representative for the Board of Trustees. And last spring, I thought that was going to be the end of me being volunteered to do things. Um, now I'm here. <laughs> anyway, now I'm at Ryder and I am studying multi-platform journalism and minoring in social media strategies. And it's because of this program that I developed the confidence to pursue becoming the um, news director for the radio station and a copy editor for the Rider News and president for PRSSA, which is Public Relations Student Society of America. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be back here tonight with my comp family. And yeah, now back to Jalen. Thank you, thank you. So, we have a top 10 performance coming up. Over 200 Atlantic Cape students, faculty, family and alumni voted on a hundred songs uh, creating a top ten list that will be danced, sung, and performed by the Communication Awards Club. So give it up for the Communication Awards Club. Number ten.
person you'll ever meet. And I'm the angriest and shortest. But that odd couple relationship that we that me and Robin have formed over the years kind of exemplifies exactly what the what the spirit of communication is all about. Speaking of the spirit of communication, the next person that we are bringing to this stage needs no introduction, but we're going to give her one anyway because she deserves it. Jenny Field is a full-time English and communication professor at Atlantic Cape and the advisor for the Atlantic Cape Review School newspaper. Here's a fun fact about Jenny. She wears green for every day of March. All right, give it up for Jenny Field. Thank you. So, hello, my name is Professor Jenny Field, and I am the advisor to the Atlantic Cape Review student newspaper. This week, the communication program had a visit from the chair of the journalism program at the College of New Jersey, TCNJ. I had the pleasure of giving her a campus tour. And as I showed her around the SGA office, the radio club, the publication suite, and the theater, I had the opportunity to introduce her to many of the students who are regulars in those areas. Students who were busy meeting and planning and creating and learning. And I was reminded as I took her around on this tour how proud I am of our campus and our facilities and our students and the work that they are doing here. And I was reminded just how many students who I like to refer to as the movers and shakers are our communication program majors. I showed her the most recent edition of the Atlantic Cape Review and explained that I'm the advisor to the club. She told me, to my surprise, that she'd heard about all the awards we won at the recent New Jersey Press Association's College Newspaper Contest. 
She said the advisor to the TCNJ paper had written down our list of awards at the luncheon and gone back and told her about them. This tells me that the four-year colleges are watching us. They are taking note of our students, and they know that our students will be prepared for their next steps. This year, the students covered everything from campus news, like faculty contract negotiations and bookstore shortages and Buccaneer sports, to features on Black History Month and, the national, and some national issues like the Taylor Swift ticket debacle. At this time, I'm pleased to announce that we received four 2022-2023 college newspaper awards. <laughs> Second place for layout and design, Cat Jax. Third place for general excellence, Michael Batista, Cat Jakes, Chloe Kramatola, and Dan Luna. Third place for arts and entertainment, Madeline, Ma I'm sorry, Madison Scavario. And third place for biography feature, Michael Batista. I thought we had a slide with pictures, but I don't know if it's not coming up. You'll see these students when they come up to get their newspaper awards in a few minutes. Uh, congratulations, there they are. Thank you. Congratulations to these students for these awards and to all of our ACR staff who made each edition possible. It takes the entire team to get the paper written, laid out, printed, and distribute, distributed. Special thanks and congratulations to our edit, edit, editor, Michael Batista, who's graduating this year. Woo! We look forward to seeing what the future holds for Michael. And the rest of us will be back. Well, Chloe's graduating too, but most of us will be back. Well, there they come. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us will be back next year for what promises to be another great year at the ACR because the news never sleeps. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Although, I gotta be frank, I don't know that I am going to be able to capture just what a marvelous person Jerry Block was. With a career that spanned more than two decades here at Atlantic Cape, Jerry was many things to many people here at this institution. She was a beloved colleague, she was a mentor, rewrites advisor, and friend. And to aspiring writers and students from all walks of life, her classroom was a safe space one where generations of students learn to find their voice through, on, through the lines of notebook paper. Many moons ago, I walked into Jerry's class and I kind of had latched on to this idea that I only cared about journalism and I only wanted to do the kind of writing that I felt like was truth. And I was only interested in the type of writing that felt like truth. So, in other words, if it wasn't like this crazy expose that like took down a drug cartel <laughs> and won a Pulitzer Prize, I wasn't interested. But in a lot of ways, Jerry showed me that creative writing tells us a different kind of truth, and it's a truth about ourselves and the human experience, whether it be through poetry or fiction or theater. It shows us what matters, what we love, what we value, what we care about, and what hurts us. Stephen King once said that writing is magic, and I had the privilege of seeing Jerry inspire her students to create magic every single day. It's changed the trajectory of my life, 
both as a professional writer and now an educator at this institution. So I've won a few of these awards in my heyday here, so I just want to give the award winners just a little piece of advice. So when you walk away from here tonight, you are going to probably put your award somewhere prominent, right? You're gonna put it on the mantle, you're gonna put it on a bookshelf, and maybe over the years as you go to college or move from apartment to apartment, your award might find itself in different places. Uh, it might find itself in the back of a closet or in a box. <laughs> Um, mine came on airplanes, so you may not see your award every day. And I also know that you're not going to remember everything that I've told you here tonight or everything about Jerry and everything that she just inspired and what a creative, loving spirit she was and just massively talented in her own right. But I do hope that when you see that award, wherever it is, whether it falls off the top of the closet or <laughs> um, you see it on the bookshelf again, that it inspires you to write what matters and write what's real and that you always continue to make magic. Thank you. Group three, please line up. And group two, if you can come to the stage, please. You know, me and Eileen, we're like sisters. She's lying to you guys. We really didn't get along last year. Okay, well, anyway, before we start fighting, let's start <laughs> saying the, the award winners. <laughs> okay, so the award for best screenplay is Liam Camp. And Soleil Yakita. The award for Best Fiction is Briar Gardella and Lacey Troll. For Best Poetry Chapbook, Jay Corbin. The award for best multi-genre work, Jessica White. The award for uh, best creative writing, Monica Flatcombs and Shane Crowley. The award for rewrites is Alexis Cabrera. Thank you, you may now exit the stage. Okay, now we're going to introduce the first nominee for Com Major of the Year, Liv Matthews. by saying thank you to everybody in the audience because we definitely wouldn't be here without your support. I want to thank Forrest for so many things I can't even get into right now, but a big thank you. And I want to thank Com Awards Club because we're finally here, we finally did it. So I'd like to get started with a little story about last year's Com Awards and how I sat in that bathroom right out there bawling my eyes out, big dramatic tears and everything. And I didn't know how to be myself, which is pretty crazy because I'm a communication major that can't communicate. But I knew that I needed to change something because the whole past year I was silent. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't make eye contact, didn't raise my hand. And then one day I had this, you know, insane Professor Forrest standing on his desk and stuff telling me, you should join Communication Awards Club. And so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. 
And so I started going every single Tuesday, and I would sit in the back, not talk. They were extremely welcoming and made sure that I felt comfortable, but it just wasn't really working out. So I told myself, sitting there, that that wasn't going to happen next year. And so I changed everything. This year, uh, I was voluntold, as they call it, to be the student government representative, which was a big boost in morale because I hadn't you know, thought that they believed in me and they had enough faith in me to make me an uh, officer of the club, which was pretty crazy. So then, during that time, I was also in public speaking, which completely cracked open my shell, and I was able to go up and do my speeches and be my true self, and that would stick. And so I had all the mentors, all the support. They made sure that you had a space to have difficult conversations, share vulnerable topics, and they made sure that at the end of the day, they said, we're here for you, and they gave me a hug, which was amazing. And so this semester, I was asked to be a public speaking mentor, which was crazy because I was barely speaking six months ago. And now I'm coaching and teaching three other students on how to be better public speakers and to feel confident in themselves. One of them is actually Gavin, another nominee, so you'll see the fruits of his labor in a little bit. <laughs> but I then started as, as a staff writer for the Atlanta Cape Review, or the school newspaper, which I have two published stories, but I've made a million friends. You go in there and it's like a work party, you know, everyone's cracking jokes. Experience to be able to, you know, stand in a real workplace and, you know, not be the one giving out, dishing out coffees and things like that, so it's really nice. But I wouldn't have been able to get that opportunity without the communication program and having people that believed in me and thought that I would be a good fit for this role. And so, last but not least, I was asked recently to be the Vice President of Communication Awards Club, which had me a bit emotional because I thought back to where I was last Common Awards and I thought about how, you know, they have enough faith in me to make me a leader in this club, so maybe I should have some faith in myself. And so if I were to be the Communication Major of the Year, I would love to be that person for other people. I want to make sure that they have the support system, the uplifting, the pushing that they need to make sure that they take the risks, they do the things that they think that they're not capable of. And so I want to be there for them. I want to make sure that they have the safe space to share you know, any issues they have inside of school, outside of school, and not feel scared or ashamed to do so. So if you were to vote for me for Communication Major of the Year, I would really appreciate it, thank you, and I would love the opportunity to give every student uh, the opportunities that they gave me here at Atlantic Cape and in the Communication Program. Thank you. Group four, please line up now. And group three, please come to the stage. Thank you, Liv, for your presentation. Now we're going to present the awards for interpersonal communication, public relations, and journalism. Did you know that back in 2020, Julia here and I actually were in Journalism One together? Yeah, that was the worst. Uh, journalism, not COVID. Oh, yeah. All right, and the award for journalism achievement goes to Chloe Kramatola. <laughs> Chloe is also winning the award for best crisis communicator. <laughs> the award for best PR group is Elijah Renman. And she's also receiving the award for PR Achievement. Brenna Lamont also receiving the award for Best Press Release and Mass Media Achievement. The award for Best Feature Story goes to Madison Scafario, Haram Shahid, and Haram is also receiving the award for Best PR Practitioner. The award for Best Interpersonal Achievement, Latana Bader, <laughs> Adriana Sanchez, <laughs> Riley Finn, <laughs> and Maikai Williams. 
The award for the Atlantic Cape Review goes to Michael Batista. Thank you. You may now exit the stage. And now we're going to introduce the next nominee, Kat Jakes. for my entire life until I became a communication major. Thanks to the communication program, I have literally beaten my social anxiety. I don't have it anymore, and it's so great. And it's all thanks to my friends and family and my new calm family within the program. I love them all so much. In Professor Forrest's public speaking class, Students are not allowed to use a podium. And this is because you should never allow yourself to be too comfortable. And this is the same for real life. You should get out there, try new things, get out of your shell, and be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And that is what the communication program has allowed me to do. With that being said, I did want to do a full speech tonight but I decided that I cannot tell you how amazing this program is in just words. So instead, I have decided to show you with a short video. So thank you to all my friends and family, and everyone who is out there, and thank you so much for possibly considering me to be your next communication major of the year. Thank you, enjoy. My name is Katherine Jakes, but you can call me Kat, and I am running for Communication Major of the Year. I lived in Georgia for 14 years of my life, and those 14 years were greatly unproductive. In elementary school, I was so bullied that I had to be pulled out to be homeschooled during middle school. I quite literally didn't have my first friend until my freshman year of high school. So there was a massive gap of socialization, and I gained a really bad case of social anxiety. I couldn't even look people in the eye without just freaking out. I knew as soon as I joined high school that I had a massive problem and I refused to live my life like that. But because of that, I forced myself to join every single club in high school. Originally, I was actually a science major headed for dermatology. Yeah, I hated it. And that was until the first day of public speaking class my second semester. So on the first day of public speaking class, the first thing that Professor Forrest told us to do was stand on the desk. Yeah, with no contacts at all. We had to get up on the desk. This was his statement that this class was not going to be like any normal class. And he was right because that class literally changed my entire life outcome. First of all, it helped me beat my social anxiety. I changed my major from science to communications because of this class. And I ended up winning the public speaking competition for that class, and it was easily one of the best days of my life. In fact, now I'm doing what I love. Now I'm no longer a student, but I'm actually a teacher. Now I'm a public speaking mentor, helping other students beat their own social anxiety. Can I play so hard? She's helped me improve my speech. He has helped me improve so much. She's so patient, so kind, so understanding. He's a great mentor, and I'm happy to have her. So far, I have hopefully helped a total of 12 public speaking children. I call them my public speaking children because I love them so much, and I look after them as if they were my own children. I love them so much. Next semester, I will be going even further as a journalism class mentor. I will also continue as a public speaking mentor. I also joined two plays at Atlantic Cape so far. I am currently secretary of the New Theater Arts Guild Club, and last semester was my first play. Just last week, we did another play on the stage. 
I also help with Communication Awards Club where I can. But biggest of all so is... So this is the Atlantic Cape Review, Atlantic Cape student-ran newspaper. This is where I spend most of my time here on campus. This is my baby, okay? It is my pride and joy. I love it so much. I handle layout and I also write stories and I help to mentor and teach other students how to write stories and do graphic design. I also help out with social media management and I teach other students how to do the same. This is some of the layout I've made. Quotes and all this fun stuff. I serve as assistant editor for the Atlantic Cape Review. Next semester, I will be stepping up to be editor-in-chief, which I am so, so excited for. I dedicate a lot of my passion for graphic design to other clubs, which is what I love to do. Poster for ACR, office hours, and this. And I also made the new logo for the Atlantic Cape Review, as you can see here, Theater Arts Guild. And I also made the logo for the Festival of the Arts. I am also currently working on a logo for a club Latino and for environmental club. Overall, I'm doing what I love in life and I'm helping other people, which is so, so amazing. And my life has purpose now, honestly. Yes, yeah, studying communications is really hard, <laughs> especially with Professor Forrest, but I don't know anyone who doesn't love it. I really want to be a communication major of the year, not so much for my personal gain, because I truly do believe in the communication program, and I feel like I am a true example of how great a program like this can completely change somebody for the better. I mean, I'm actually a different person now, literally, completely, but in the best way possible. And it would not have been possible without the communication program and my new little family here at Lenny Cape. I will always carry Professor Forrest's communication goals with me and reflect them on other people because they truly are important in life. Forrest has three communication rules for communication majors and they are written on all of his syllabi. Rule number one is work hard. Rule number two, which is the most important to me, is support each other. And rule number three is to get involved. And I really do like to think that I follow all three of these rules Religiously. I will do everything I possibly can to better the lives of other students and also dedicate myself to the communication program. I want to use my experiences to connect with new communication majors. I want to let them know that I've been that nervous student before on the first day of class. I know that if I can do it, they can also find their place here. My biggest goal is to help people emerge from their own personal podiums because I know what it's like to be blocked off from living life. And that's what I'm passionate about, truthfully, is helping people, like how the communication program has helped me. Thank you, Kat, for your presentation. I'm now gonna ask group four to come to the stage and group five to line up. Um, ah, that's a filler word, we don't do those here. <laughs> uh, so, ah. Okay. Um, Excuse me, what? All right, Jayla, take it away, please. <laughs> we will now present the awards for public speaking. The award for public speaking achievement goes to Cat Jakes. Cat <laughs> Jakes is also receiving award for best persuasive speech. The award for best informative speech, Shannon Kell. <laughs> Julia Thompson. <laughs> Caitlin Rodriguez. And Dima Dibinskjeva. And the award for best persuasive speech, Olivia Matthews. Sarah Bruce. Pedro Alam Brun. Eugene Lawrence. Mackenzie McKenna. And Julie Gay. Thank you guys, you may now exit the stage. All right, so let's keep the
the ball rolling with introducing our next nominee, Gavin Dola. Give it up. So, I'm pretty sure you all heard by now about you know, the nominees who are great, by the way. I love them. You heard from the, our faculty members, you heard from our hosts as well that the communication program is more than just a program. First and foremost, it's more like a family. Everyone in this program, they all support each other, no matter what it is. When I first went into this program, which was this year, by the way, this is my first year, I came in with a strictly business mindset. Because I knew in my future I wanted to plan concerts. And this being a big show and all, would look great on a resume. But the people here are what changed this from being strictly business to being more of a family, family, family event. These people are some of the best people you'll ever meet. And I want to honor that tradition. The tradition that calm is more than a program and more of a family. I want to make those bonds and keep those bonds to future generations, to future students. And that's what I'm gonna advocate for. Win or lose, no matter what happens, I'm gonna make sure that no matter how many years go by, that this program will still be considered more than a program. It will be considered family. That no matter how many years go by, we can come back to this place and remember that we are calm students, that we are students under Professor Faris. Me again. Thank you, Gavin, for your presentation. Hey, Jalen, do you remember when we worked together? Oh, how could I forget? And, and radio, right? Yeah. A form of media? Yeah, it was. Oh, sweet. So it makes sense for us to be now presenting the award for uh, theater and mass media. I guess you're right, yeah. All right, so then without further ado, the award for best comedic scene goes to Michael Batista. receiving the award for a be for best dramatic scene. Also for best dramatic scene, Vivian Martinez. Woo! And the award for best dramatic monologue, welcome back to the stage, Cat Jakes. Woo! The award for theater arts guild, Rebecca Alabat. Award for Best Mass Media Paper, Victoria Prickett. The Award for Best Mass Media Project, Anthony Kakaro, Brian Soria, Shane Crowley, and Madison Scafaria. The Award for Radio Club, Ethan Kretsch. Best video production, Navin Patterson. Okay, you can all exit the stage. So let's keep the ball rolling once again with another uh, communication major of the year nominee coming right up. Ruby Taylor, give it up.
name is Ruby Taylor and I'm running for the 2023 to 2024 Communication Major of the Year. Some of you may have noticed I'm not physically present tonight. The reason for that is for the past four months, I have been living in England with my girlfriend. In the past four months alone, I've experienced more things in my life than I ever have before. This includes going to fairs, flea markets, and of course concerts. I even learned how to make sounds for video games. My love for the communication program has only grown stronger since living here in England. These new experiences have led me to learn new things about myself that I am extremely grateful for. I've been able to express my creativity through numerous mediums, one of which being the very video you're about to watch. With that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful night and thank you so much for your love and support. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the same girl you all know today. The same girl who would turn bright red if you even looked at her. I've always valued entertaining others and telling stories, whether it was writing poetry or singing and dancing to the Jonas Brothers. It wasn't until the communication program that I truly found myself and my future. Up until I was a teenager, I was always creating scenarios, whether it was short films with my siblings or games with my neighbors that were spent more on planning than actually playing. It wasn't until 2016 when my stepmom died that I lost my creative motivation. I completely shut myself out from the world and I didn't write, sing, dance, or have any motivation for that matter. By the time I got to high school a year later, I attempted to revive my creativity with poetry. Film and creative writing were never an option for me because my high school never encouraged creative fields. I was pushed into what I like to call the box of mediocrity. I graduated as a future early education major. Within the first three months of attending ACCC, I switched my major to general studies. I was lost in a passionless and isolating situation with no one to turn to. That was until I met this man. I joined the communication awards program as a shy student who knew nothing about the club or the major. After going to meetings every week leading up to the 15th annual communication awards show, I knew I found my people and my future. I felt I could be myself and express my creativity without any judgment. Within months, I was dressing as my professor for his birthday and Halloween, and of course making my lot of friends. Since joining the program, I've become the secretary and SGA rep for the Communication Awards Show Club. I've also become the video editor and co-secretary to the Atlantic Cape Review. I've also spent the last three semesters as a public speaking mentor. I've not only been able to share my knowledge and skills with students, but I've been able to build relationships and leadership skills. Each of these opportunities have grown my love for the communication program as a whole. For the first time since losing my stepmom, I finally felt that I had a future to look forward to. My main goal is not only to share stories and entertain others, but to encourage others to be creative and passionate in their future as well. I believe too many people are pushed into the box of mediocrity, creating boring and unfulfilling realities. As communication major of the year, my objective would be to showcase how special being a communication major is, especially in Cape May County. If I had known about the creative world outside of Cape May County, that invites creativity and storytelling, I would have begun my journey much earlier. Communication is much more than a degree at Atlantic Cape. It's a hardworking, supportive, involved family. As communication major of the year, as well as a woman in a creative field, I would be proving two major points of my success. Little girls like this all over the world should never have to stop what they love because other people tell them they can't. You can. As for people in Cape May County, there's hope for some of us. Some. Some. Seven, please line up, and group six, please come to the stage. Who in here likes films? 
No. Come on, guys. Who here likes music? And who in here likes television? All of you can thank comm majors for those things. Yeah. We will now present the awards for pop music, film, and TV history. The award for best TV history project, Olivia Matthews, Ambassador, and Charlene Maycott. Charlene Maycott is also receiving the award for best TV history paper, TV history achievement, and communication awards club. The award for best pop music project goes to Anthony Cacaro. Victoria Prickett and Tabitha Taylor. Tabitha is also receiving the awards for Best Pop Music Paper and Pop Music Achievement. For Best Film History Group, Cameron Main, Catherine James, and Brennan Lemon. Brennan is also receiving the award for Best Film History Paper and Film History Achievement. Major of the Year nominees. So let's welcome back to the stage, Liv Matthews. And Kat Jakes. <laughs> Gavin Dolak. <laughs> Ruby Taylor isn't here, but she's here in spirit. So first, I would like to thank all of you for, for presenting for our Communication Major of the Year. And now I'm going to explain the voting process because I've been through this, I think, five times now? Yeah, five times. So all of you should, yeah, that is a lot. All of you should have gotten your programs and inside of it should be a slip of paper where you will vote for your Communication Major of the Year. And there will be people coming around with pens or pencils for you guys to vote with and please vote. Please vote during this intermission. That's happening right now. Thank you. I'm on stage. 
stereo One, two, ah Feel it in the rain You can see the sun and I feel fire I see fire Baby, you are my love Give you everything you need You are my queen something very important. Does the orange work? daughter Jenna DeLuca, who's also a professor here, but unfortunately Jenna is dealing with an emergency tonight. She is, her dog Charlie is very sick, unfortunately, so she is home dealing with Charlie. But, <clears throat> so we all know that it takes a lot of heroes to get success in life, and Atlanta Cape's communication program is very much a family, and in every family, you need help. You need, like Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village to raise a child, or in this case, a communication major. Actually, in the case of a communication major, it might take several villages, in fact, <laughs> assuming that they're on their beds. So, I think that there are a lot of people that are getting <clears throat> awards tonight, and we're all really proud of them, but I want to say a few words for a moment about the people at home about your families, about your 
parents, about your caregivers, and maybe even siblings, although probably not. But sometimes siblings do actually support you. <laughs> so I want to say a moment, say for a moment, being a dad myself, how important it is what parents do to support you, to encourage you, to write checks for you. <laughs> In fact, a study came out recently that said it takes a quarter of a million dollars to get a child from birth to 18. So somebody owes me a million dollars. <laughs> anyway, I'd like all the parents of the award winners to please stand up. Come on, all the parents of the award winners. Big round of applause for mom and dad, everyone. Thank you for all that you do. And I know, despite the jokes that people like to make about Gen Z, I know that our world is in very capable hands. I'm, I'm very proud of the work that our students do here. They're like my own children, except that I can give them back. So that's kind of nice, because at the end of the day, they don't come home with me. Anyway, what's up next is a very, 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 very behind the scenes look at the communication program and the communication awards. It's more the office than Ken Burns, but please enjoy. You've got to, you've already been through the you project and that kind of stuff. You give them advice about that because you will done all Because it's perfect. perfect. All right, all right so uh, I'm Chloe, president of the Communication yeah, Awards Club. I'm Liv, vice president. Yeah, so we thought it'd be great to document the day since we're getting ready to finish the show and make sure everything's the plan. I'd say we can get everything done today, right, Liv? Oh, yeah, for sure. reading this right, and I'm not sure that I am. It looks like we're on schedule for the communication awards, and that's not communication major behavior. Really, what gives? Come on, what am I missing? Something's not right. We're introverts. We don't talk much, but we do get stuff done. Most of the time. I'm the only extrovert here, surprisingly. I've kind of become like the calm mom so that means that I'm always looking after them because they're like you know they're like my kids they're my calm kids and I make sure that nobody messes with my calm kids all right guys so we're gonna get in our teams and make sure we're all good to go for the show and sure why are you on this board again what what's wrong with that she's miniature she's basically a midget yeah she is the Shortest comm major ever. Officially a midget. By federal government standards. Did they call me short again? Listen, I'm actually taller than my mother. My... should actually get Ruby in here. You're right. Hey, Ruby. Say hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Ruby. How are things in British land? It's jolly good. Ruby's our SGA rep. She's visiting England for the time being, and I'm honestly kind of surprised how British she's already become. I didn't actually develop an accent, but they believe I did. So, we're about a month out from the show. If everything gets done today, we don't have to worry about anything for the rest of the year. Yeah. No more work! No more work! Okay. Whoa, 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 what the hell? That's not the communication major way. What's rule number one? Word Yeah, so I had the idea for the three rules a couple of years ago. And I think it's made them better students. 
but sometimes it seems a little like a cold. And you guys messed up the balloons again. I said black, red, and gold. I didn't say pink and white. Are you kidding me? I'm the reception coordinator with Charlene and the dance instructor with Brenna. I didn't have a choice for either of those things. Unbelievable. Is everything okay over here? Oh, that yeah. yeah. Um, thank God. I needed to find you. So we have to finish the choreography for the dance because the plie is not mixing up with the hitch kick mm. or like, yeah, the hip walk. So I, I can't believe nobody's responded yet. It seems like nobody's going to go to the show. I mean, someone did just send a Shrek name. I mean, that's kind of the response. I'm the vice president, a work coordinator, and somehow the designated graphic designer. Hey Liv, can you make a poster that screams synergy, impact, ecology, ecosystem, compassion, and buy one get one free? Thanks, I just need that in 20 minutes. Take care. I love that so much. You know, sometimes I wake up in a cold sweat at the night. And I have to ask upon you to help me. Can you help me answer? Would you rather have left twigs if it tasted like right twigs? Or right twigs if it tasted like left twigs? Why? Oh, obviously left twigs. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, left. Hey, editing team, what's going on here? Nothing. Not left twigs or right twigs, Lord? I would actually choose the right twigs. I'm sorry, who are you again? I come to every meeting. Yeah, they're awful. Especially Forrest. Yeah, I'm sorry. Forrest can't dance, like, at all. Okay, first of all, these arrogant little Gen Zers. I've been dancing since before they were born, all right? My nickname in college was Mr. Dance Off. So this idea that I can't... Oh yeah, Chloe, cool. how's the song coming along for the show? I am so glad you asked. It goes something like... <laughs> Uh, what? Uh, what was that? Okay, people, what is rule number two? Support each other. See, that wasn't very supportive of this. At least I didn't have to say one of the friend. Alright, rule three! Yes. Yes. Get it all! <laughs> I think I want more. No. No. I swear, by the end of the night, you guys are going to go from, oh my gosh, there he is, to... <sighs> there he is again. Good evening to all. So, my name is Jalen Hudgens, and I was the communication major of the year, serving in the 2019 to 2020 term. As an alumni now, it is honestly bewildering to stand before you today, explaining how the communication program here at Atlantic Cape uh, it's just truly given me the footing that I need to become confident in who I am and who I would become. Um, audacious in the way that causes my reputation to precede me. And unapologetically fearless when it comes to the goals set in my heart, despite the obstacles set in my path. A lot of you who are currently learning through this program or are just on the outside looking in might think that I'm giving a lot of praise to a community college led by a screaming Jewish man in his 50s that stands on desks, loves Big Mom Thornton, and hates being called a boomer. But, but, but trust me when I say that this praise is well deserved when you consider how much it has done in the life of every student that has come through this program, hence all of us being here tonight. 
For me, it was a perfect storm. A complex array of all-time records that have yet to be broken, as well as somebody who wasn't even confident enough to try. A promising future with my name written all over it, as well as somebody who really didn't even know who he was in the present. A community of some of the most caring and generous and honest people worthy of being lifelong friends, as well as somebody who was used to figuring everything out on his own, for better or for worse. All of these things, though troubling due to their contradictory nature, was what helped me understand more than just radio, television, film, journalism, or public relations, but about what working hard, supporting each other, and getting involved can really do. For those who have been with me through my Atlantic Cape journey, you understand exactly why my time in, as Communication Major of the Year, my calm experience, and the entirety of my time at Atlantic Cape uh, means to me and why. For those who haven't, if you'd be so kind, please allow me to explain. At the tender age of four years old, I was medically diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome and Pervasive Developmental Disorder. It is something that, though tough to overcome, it was still possible, nevertheless, for I inevitably encountered a few issues that came with these disabilities. For example, my mother was told by the doctor that I would never play team sports, I would never be able to socialize and efficiently communicate, and all these things would be impossible for me. And even though it was hard to break, it was all proven wrong after countless opportunities to explore my talents and abilities, which Atlantic Cape and the, and the communication program here has played a huge role in. The doctor told my mom I wouldn't be able to socialize. But my activity here at Atlantic Cape included me being a 3.0 average student, an athlete, a member of four clubs, being a radio host with a show called Faith Time, and being part of multiple circumstances that has helped me build relationships with many, and which include a lot of you tonight who I consider family. The doctor told my mom that I wouldn't be able to play team sports, yet I stand before you today the former captain of the men's basketball team here as well as at Kane University after, after here and earn accolades such as being on the second team conference among the top 10 players in the league, awarded most valuable player for the team, and was even afforded the opportunity to once put up numbers in a tournament in Australia attended by Ben Simmons. The doctor said I wouldn't be able to communicate efficiently but y'all know where I'm going with this, right? Yet, I stand before you today as a former communication major of the year, a first-generation college student from here and Kane University, a youth pastor at my church, and now as an employee back at Atlantic Cape, the place where it all started as a college recruiter. of my journey at school, but helped me in expanding my testimony to do exactly what I've intended to do with the trajectory of the rest of my life from here on out, which is to help people look into pursuing an education or achieve a goal of any kind and to be living proof that even though the inevitable hardships will come, it is not impossible to overcome. It is always possible. No matter what handicap you have in your life, Anything that you put your mind and your heart to is possible. Not, forgive me. I'm such a punk, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not only is that the experience that I have here at Atlantic Cape, but it was confirmed by the opportunities that I've been afforded through this program. Opportunities such as being able to achieve my goals by, being, by helping me to remove the veil that has been placed over my life all these years ago. And with that, I am honored, and I thank everybody in this beloved program for the huge confidence boost that allows me to encourage my intention of being an influence. I also want to commend everyone here tonight who was selected as a winner because you are all examples of the same notion. So again, I say thanks to everyone at Atlantic Cape for the opportunity. Thanks to all the recipients of tonight's awards for being examples and a communication program here for confirming to this small town boy with Asperger's Syndrome and Pervasive Developmental Disorder that anything is possible. I said it in my Communication Major of the Year nominee speech four years ago, and I say it again tonight. The only time your dream is too small is when you no longer feel the need to fight for it. Thank you.
somebody who was very influential and very impactful in helping me to even become confident enough to be communication major of the year, and somebody who saw it in me to do such. Somebody that I owe a lot of my successes here to, and that honor goes to Ms. Briar Gibbons. Give it up. <laughs> Tall, but not that tall. Wow. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Jalen, for making me cry before I go on stage. Um, my name is Briar Gibbons, and I graduated in 2014. Just like many of the people that you've seen on stage tonight, I was pretty much voluntold to be here. I joined the communication club in 2011 because I, it sounded like an easy extra credit opportunity, but I guess the joke was on me. Um, after graduating, I was pretty much voluntold to form an alumni council. And for the last five years, I've been the president of the alumni council. And again, voluntold to do so. <laughs> to the 2023 graduates, I do just wanna to say to you that I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. I know that your education here has been exceptional, and I hope that you just never forget your roots, never forget where you came from, and I hope you decide to stay connected to us through the alumni council. Tonight I'm here to present the Alumni of the Year Award and I'm honored to present that award to Nathan Evans Jr. Nate is a 2015 graduate of the communication program. He is a mental health advocate, resilient speaker, and the founder of the Nathan Evans Jr. Group and co-founder of Being Me is Dope. Nathan was honored as one of the top 40 under 40 distinguished alumnus of Atlantic Cape and is a member of the 30 under 35 top young African American leaders in South Jersey. Nathan's contributions to his community are what make him a perfect 2023 Alumni of the Year. So please help me in welcoming Nathan Evans Jr. Oh man, y'all look beautiful. Um, I don't know if I was even supposed to do that, but they told me I got a few minutes. Um, so first and foremost, I just want to say um, that I'm grateful and I'm honored for this opportunity, for this recognition. Um, I want to give all thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to give thanks to my beautiful wife, who's somewhere here in the back um, with our son. I want to give thanks to our family, our friends. Um, and I also want to give a huge thanks to Keith Forrest, Professor Forrest. Um, he literally changed my life. I remember coming here and that first day of class with him, standing on top of the desk. I'm like, man, who is, like, who is this dude? Like, he's, he's tripping, for real. And I was gonna walk back out the classroom, but I ended up staying and I found out that this random guy happened to be the professor. Um, but he literally changed my life. And I say that because coming here to ACCC was not my first option. It actually wasn't even my second option. Prior to coming here, I actually went to three different colleges and dropped out three different times. I happen to be somebody who dealt with a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. My, my grandfather, who I was super close with, he passed away in 2008. And when that happened, it took so much from me. And I didn't know how to express my emotions, what I was going through. So I constantly ran from place to place to school to school. There was a lot of triggers that came up when that passing happened. And for me, when I first initially got to school down in Memphis, Tennessee, the severe anxiety and the severe depression took over, and that's when I started to drop out and run. And again, it bounced around from three different schools, and then I got here, and I met Professor Forrest, and I met Professor Joy, and they seen who I was, and they spoke life into that. Mm. There was no judgment. They actually just seen the gifts within me, and they nurtured me, and they allowed me to fully be myself. And then they also showed me what, what it was like to serve others. They didn't come at me like a professor. They came, as me, they came to me as someone who was looking to serve a person. And that's how they treat everybody within this program. And that was one of my main takeaways when I left ACCC and I graduated with my degree in communication, which I actually called communications for a long time and they checked me on that. It's actually communication. It's not communications. If you say it, communication major is gonna get at you. <laughs> like for real. Um, but I learned to serve others and use my gifts, and I found fulfillment in doing that. What I, what I understood was this when I left, was that success wasn't achievement, 
It wasn't awards, it wasn't accolades. That's what society tells you success is, right? And it's beautiful to celebrate yourself and I think we should do more of it. I actually need to do a better job of it. But what I found out was that success, true success, is fulfillment. And you can only gain fulfillment through service to others. So if I had to leave you with any type of encouragement today um, to all of the students here, all of the family, the faculty, is to serve others because that's where your fulfillment is. It's not gonna be in things, it's not gonna be in money, it's not gonna be in accolades, it's gonna be in service. And you all have an opportunity to serve someone else. So as I stand up here and I accept this award, which is a full circle moment because I never thought that this would happen. Because again, when I got here, I was constantly running. Actually, my wife, she was the one that encouraged me to go back to school. She was the one that was actually my girlfriend at the time. And she encouraged me to come here because I was done completely. I gave up on everything. I gave up on sports. I said, I'm done. And she said, you should try it again. And I came back years later. I'm the oldest one in my classroom. I'm looking at all these kids coming in and I stuck it through and I graduated. And she encouraged me and she inspired me, right? So I want you all to take that with you to serve others. How can you serve somebody else with what you have? Because that's where the real fulfillment is. And the last thing I'll say is this, and I want you to listen up. Someone is waiting on what you're building. I'm blessed right now to travel the country full time speaking. I'm a best selling author, podcast host. I do amazing things, and it's incredible. But what I realized was that I had to be resilient in order to do those things. And somebody on the other end of what I was doing, what I was building, was waiting on that thing. So just imagine, it's much bigger than just us. Who's waiting for what you're building? While you're procrastinating, while you're doubting yourself, while you're insecure, I want you to realize that you're holding up somebody's blessing. So I want you to do some self-reflection. Realize that you're here to serve others because your fulfillment is there. And then I want you to believe in yourself and all of the gifts and the talents and the amazing things that you have in you that God has placed in you. Because there's somebody on the other end that you may not know now, but one day you may meet them. And they need what's inside of you. They need you to create that thing. They need you to bring that to life. They need you to be all that you can be. So I'm honored. I'm grateful to be here. Um, this is incredible. Really a full circle moment to have my wife who encouraged me to come here. And then also our beautiful son in the back who's probably asleep or he ain't much sleep. <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm honored. And I just want to say thank you um, for this recognition. I'm going to receive it. I'm going to hold it well. Um, and I'm going to soak it in with my family and loved ones. Thank you. Please come to the stage. I think it makes sense that they have me up here tonight introducing faculty award since I am now <laughs> faculty. <laughs> so, the award for faculty pioneers goes to Christian Monroe and Kyle Ward. something that's true in my life too. Uh, I'm very blessed to be here. Uh, this is actually a full circle moment for me as well. Uh, but I would just like to thank everybody from ACCC and uh, everybody put this together. This is a wonderful event. So I would give them a big round of applause. For the <laughs> Excellent. Also for Bobby. Uh, now, I thought it was really cool and uh, I was just really touched uh, that a student, a former student, would, would think of me a couple years later and nominate me for this. So 
of course I was going to be here and just really appreciate you, Bobby. But uh, I actually Woo! found one. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby! talking about similar things, finding your voice while you're here at ACCC in the communication department. I actually found my voice right here on the stage, so a very full circle moment for me um, under the tutelage of, of a former director, Sue Griffith, and I'm just very appreciative of her and all that this program has meant for me as well. So thank you very much, and uh, God bless you. Shaman for this award. Um, as somebody who's produced over 30 film festivals, I understand the importance of keeping the show on time. With that, I say thank you for the award. I truly appreciate it. <laughs> Public speaking class and was the senior mentor for fall 2022. I'm Kayla Gonzalez. I've mentored three of four classes and I'm the head mentor for the communication and history courses. Whenever I'm asked what a senior mentor is or just a mentor in general, it's really hard to come up with an actual definition. FARA says we're like teacher's assistants, students who have taken the class before and returned to help a new set of students, prepare for speeches, prepare for quizzes, or just give advice on how to succeed in the class. But the first thing I always think of when it comes to mentoring is the environment in the public speaking room. On the very first day of class, Farish talks about what the students will do on the last day of class. They're gonna dress up for their last speech and we're gonna take a group photo together. And he says it's always an emotional day because it's the last time the class will meet together. And as I look around at the students' faces, it seems like none of them believe him. But I've mentored three semesters now, and every semester on that last day, people are taking photos with their mentor, giving group hugs, and it truly is that emotional day that Forrest talks about. That's what I think of when I think of mentoring because it's such a unique experience to see in a college setting. And that experience is set by Forrest and by the mentor program. When Forrest first asked me to mentor, I was surprised and very excited. That meant that I excelled in the class and he believed I would be a good fit to help the students that come after me. But it was more than that. When I, one of my favorite classes the mentor actually is um, a history class, um, Women in American History. It's amazing to see these students who think they know U.S. history come in, and then they learn this whole other aspect when it comes to the women in American history. I even met one of my best friends while mentoring this class. <laughs> mentoring is incredibly rewarding, and I can't wait to see what the future of the mentoring program holds. Thank you. Thank you. You may now come to the stage in group nine, please line up. We will now present the awards for mentoring. Sharon Hayes. 
Ken and Cal. Yeah! Yeah! Tabitha Taylor. And the awards for senior mentoring are Alexis Cabrera and Kayla Corson. Thank you, you can then exit the stage. Okay, and now I'm gonna introduce the boomer himself, Keith Forrest. Got a little confused by the music cue there. Actually, it's supposed to be Jeopardy music. <laughs> Alright, let's. Audience, come on. program. In fact, students get very, very protective of their traditions. Like, for example, if you get an A on a paper, you hang it on your fridge like you did when you were eight years old and your parents would put up your artwork, which they really didn't think was very good, but they hung it up anyway because they were proud of you. So another tradition is piling way more people than can possibly fit into office hours. And one of the most important traditions is the Jeopardy review for midterms and finals. And students take this really seriously. It gets very, very heated. People want to win. If they win, they get their picture up on the Facebook page. You can see how they look. You can see how condescending they are towards <laughs> their classmates that lost. So this is something that they take very, very seriously. <clears throat> and I'm here to announce that Beyonce and Jay-Z are backstage now, not that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. So, we have decided that over the next year, we are going to form a group, if anyone's interested, email me, to decide who is going to go into the Jeopardy, Communication Jeopardy Hall of Fame, and we will announce that at next year's show, at the 17th Annual Communication Awards. So I know that this will make a lot of the alumni very excited. There are some alumni that have let me know in no uncertain terms that they think that they belong <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. I also want to report that there's only been one injury ever during a Jeopardy game. And that was Lindsay Burton, who raised her hand too fast and punched herself in the face. <laughs> So that's the only injury anyone has ever sustained. And then there was, I think there was a big injury to an ego because one semester we're, we are making way too much noise. And so usually what happens is during the review, whatever professor is in the classroom next door comes over and asks us to quiet down. So this one particular semester, this professor, I don't know what he taught, he comes over he walks into the classroom and he says, what are you doing in here? And I, I'm totally not involved in this. And the students are like, we're reviewing for a midterm. <laughs> and he goes, what? So are we. He like literally forgets about telling us to quiet down. He slunks off, goes back to his room, at which point I picture him like calling his wife and being like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm finished with the teaching thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the Jeopardy game is something that's, that's really, really important to them. And for the 17th annual, the other thing is, this was supposed to be stand-up comedy, but as I told you, Jenna DeLuca is home with her dog. 
But I will steal a line from one of my students, Dylan Ryerson, which this will only be funny probably for those of you who've had me in class, but Dylan described my classes as an hour and 15 minutes of improv, occasionally interrupted by a lecture. <laughs> so that is my one joke. I also am here to thank the behind the scenes folks that helped put this together. Some of us you see out here on stage and you know the role that we serve, but there are very many, many behind the, behind the scenes personnel like Demetrius Letson up there in the audio booth. Dave Capelli. Doug Rohr. Raymond Jacob. Rebecca Alabac. Heather Boone, who 80% of the time when somebody has done something wrong during the last 16 years, it's been me. So I make Heather Boone's life hard. We'd also like to thank Doug Mills for helping put this together. And also Lisa Gibbons and the Student Government Association as well. So thank you to all those people that helped put this together. the awards for student pioneer one oh, volunteer service and outstanding academic achievement Woo. Woo -hoo. these awards encapsulate the three roles which you've heard many times tonight which are work hard support each other and get involved the award for student pioneer Alexis Cabrera talking about a very important alumni to this program. Um, I would just like to, can we give it up again for all the amazing alumni and students that have been here? It's an incredible job. And I can tell you from having been an alumni here myself that this is totally different. So before I talk about Julie, I, I just want to take you back to that time like a decade-ish or so. Uh, Keith was a younger-ish man. Um, he still did improv. Jokes were a little different. There was like one about a DeLorean, but I guess it like doesn't hit with the Gen Z demographic. Uh, I had like a kind of questionable spray tan. This was like the Jersey Shore era. And the communication awards that you see today are totally different. There was no club, there was no positions. It was quite literally an unsanctioned club in an empty classroom with six kids. And among them was to my soon-to-be best friend, Julie. And you know, a lot of the ethos of the show is that this is all done by students. And they're the ones who really make it amazing. And that was still very much the sort of ethos back then, too. With the exception of the awards, we didn't make those. That was all shoppies. But we did everything. And for having a tight budget then and just six students, I, that was wildly ambitious. Keith and I have talked about this, but 
I think it would have been natural for anyone to look around that classroom and hear, you know, we're going to put this big award show on. This is what we're going to do. There's only six of us. I think any, like, it would have been normal for any student to not see the value in that or, like, look around and be like, what is this? And want to quit. And I know at my first year, I definitely had my doubts, but not my friend Julie. My best friend Julie, she was quite literally the lifeblood of this show in its early years. And she was equally the lifeblood of our Titan group. Uh, Julie passed in 2021. And when I think about this award and the Pioneer Awards and the Volunteer Award, and I think about the folks who win these awards, I think about all of the things that I miss in Julie. She was hardworking, she was brilliant, she was a good friend, she was loyal, she was dedicated to the cause, whether it seemed big or small or totally hopeless. She put everything into the show to make it what it is today, to make this program to what it is today. When they say break a leg, she quite literally did that. And apparently this, this is a pretty far drop, so um, she went right off the stage and broke her leg. But so she put everything into this. And that is like, again, this is still so much great, the ethos of the show today. And when I picture these qualities, I know that they're in this next generation of students. And I know that it is very much in your capable hands. And just like Julie made this show better, you guys will always continue to make this show better. So congratulations. So, as the winner of the Julianne Volunteer Service Award, I just want to take a brief moment to thank all of the friends, family, and people I've met here over the past four years. When I first arrived here in 2019, I did not know what I was getting into. But upon meeting everybody here in the program, I really decided to give my all. and. I'm really thankful to have met them and to put everything into the show. From winning Tom Major of the Year to being president and to running the show last year, I, I can't thank the people here enough. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, winning the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award um, is amazing, but it's not just about the GPA or the grade to me. To me, it's about meeting everyone here and always fulfilling that rule number one and to work hard. And I do it not just for me, but for my family, for the Calm family I've met here, and all my mentors. Um, I'd like to give a thank you to my mom and stepdad especially, and of course Professor Forrest. They've always pushed me and I just want to keep doing my best. And um, I'm so happy to have worked with everyone to organize this show tonight and just to uh, see everyone out here. It's an amazing thing. So, thank you. We would like to call to the stage Keith Forrest, Chloe Cremutolo, and Cameron May. We've finally reached the halfway mark. <laughs> so this is, if this is the Oscars, and I want to make clear, in case the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences is listening, it is not. But if it were, this is Best Picture. So this is the moment at which we bring all of the Com Major nominees back out on the stage. Com Major of the Year nominees. <laughs> and Ruby, who's in England somewhere right now. Logo. 
All right, so now the moment that you've all been waiting for. This is actually the moment if this was a televised broadcast where we would go to commercial. Oh, you want me to say it now? Okay, gotcha. First, here to give out the Communication Major of the Year Runner-Up Award, the current Communication Major of the Year Runner-Up, Cameron Main. The Communication Major of the Year Runner-Up for 2023-2024 is Olivia Matthews. And now to present the Communication Major of the Year Award, the current Communication Major of the Year, Chloe Kremitola. The winner is... Can I get a drum roll or something? <laughs> Jack! Yes! Yes! Okay, so how about one more round of applause for all of the nominees? What Griffin birthday did you do? You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Good night. <laughs>